So, <clears throat> a lot of people out there know this man here. This is uh, John Kerry. He's an American politician, and he's been in the game a long, long time. Actually, he's the guy who I said um, was was one of the guys interviewed on national television in America, and was asked um, if he was a member of Skull and Bones. Do you remember? Do you remember I said that in one of the one of the things, one of the breakdowns, the layers of existence. Existence. I mentioned John Kerry and Bush because Skull and Bones came up. Skull and Bones was on, was a, was a, a name on that sign, and I was like, "Oh shit!" Skull and Bones came back to me. I start getting all these flashbacks of all things I've learned about Skull and Bones down the years. But <coughs> sorry, he's a he was he's an American, like I said, politician and diplomat, right? And he's he served many roles. This fella, he's been in many roles. I'm nearly sure he was part of the Trilateral Commission as well, or was it? It was either the Trilateral Commission, well, they're all one and the same, really, we know that. But it was either the Trilateral Commission or the Council on Foreign Relations. And Kerry had a lot to do with that stuff. But he was um, he was also the Secretary of State to the US for four years back in 2014. I think it was under Obama. Uh, he had, like, he played such a massive role in international negotiations. That's why I'm saying... That, he was a member of one of them, Council on Foreign Relations or the Trilateral Commission. Um, he was actually included a big part of the Iran nuclear deal. Do you remember that back in 2015 in Paris? It was a, do you know what the agreement was about? It was, a group, it was about climate change. He carries a big part of that as well. He was also a senator in uh, the U.S., in the state of uh, Massachusetts. So you're going back to like the eighties and for nearly 20 years, he was, he was Senator of Massachusetts. Um, he actually ran in that time. He ran against Bush. Isn't that weird? He ran against Bush, George W. Bush. And they're the two names that your mum was like, aren't you two, aren't the two of used members of Skull and Bones? <laughs> well, hang on, he's running against them. Out in public, he's, they're like arch enemies. But behind closed doors, the both of them are, are both members of Skull and Bones. Remember what Bush said? So secret, I can't talk about it. <laughs> but he seems to be more based on foreign policy. They use John Kerry around foreign policy. Um, he became, he became the, presidential envoy for climate under President Joe Biden and still is since 2001 where he solely focused on climate change efforts and stuff like this and US policy around it but let's have a listen to what he says he said, this is a meeting this is a world economic forum meeting and listen to listen to what he's, what he's talking about here and I think the the dislike of and anguish over social media is just growing and growing and growing straight into it straight into it so so the anguish and dis and distrust is growing because social media is so big uh and it's part of our problem particularly in democracies uh in terms of building consensus around any issue it's really hard to govern today <laughs> just look at the hands He's pleading with us. He's pleading with people. You know, trust me, it's really hard to govern today because social media is ahead of mainstream media, basically. That's what he's saying. And so these people can't control the narrative anymore of what they want to push. You can't, you know, you know there's no, the referees we used to have to determine what's a fact and what isn't a fact have kind of, you know, been eviscerated to a certain degree. I'm wondering... What are those things he was talking about? What are those trustees? Is that what he said? We used to have to determine what's a fact and what isn't a fact. They've kind of, you know, been eviscerated. So there was, there was something they had in place. I think he's probably addressing the mainstream media again as like the truth sayers, you know, the truth holders. But he says that's basically been eviscerated now. To a certain degree. And um, people go and that people self-select. 
where they go for their news or for their information. And then you just get into a vicious cycle. So it's really, really... See, he doesn't want, he doesn't want us going and looking for ourselves. They're so afraid of us going and looking for ourselves and trying to understand things ourselves as human beings, as individuals. That's what fucking scares them. It's really hard, much harder to build consensus today than at any time in the 45, 50 years I've been involved in this. And, and I, you know, there's a lot of discussion now about how you curb uh, those entities uh, in order to guarantee that you're going to have, you know, some accountability on facts, et cetera. But look, if people go to only one source and the source they go to is sick and, uh, you know, has an agenda and they're putting out disinformation. Bill, there we go. Didn't take them long. What was that, a minute and a half? And by the way, you mentioned consensus twice. In politics, That's that might be something that's needed in pass, passing legislation. That's, that satisfies the parties. It doesn't have to satisfy them all, but it has to satisfy it in a fair enough, a fair amount of the parties that they can pass stuff. Isn't that mad? And he, and he over, well, not overemphasized the word, but he said it more than any other word. Uh, our First Amendment stands as a major block to the ability to be able to just, you know, hammer it out of existence. So, Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? The way he says that, it's like nothing, isn't it? But if you if you look into the First Amendment in America, it's the it's the freedom of religion. That's what he's talking about. Freedom of religion. Didn't he say uh, Amendment One? Let me just double check. One source, and the source they go to is sick, and uh, you know has an agenda, and they're putting out disinformation. Uh, our First Amendment stands as a major block to the ability to be able to just yeah force. So he's so he's saying so he's saying basically with the the freedom of religion, it would prohibit a, a government from establishing a state religion, and that's the only thing he said that's stopping him. Isn't that weird? Very bizarre words he's choosing. You know, hammer it out of existence. So <laughs> hammer it out of existence. What the fuck I think he's tall. What you need, what we need, is to is to win the ground, win the right to govern by hopefully having uh, you know winning enough votes that you're free to be able to to uh, implement change. Uh, now, obviously, there are some people in our country who are prepared to implement change in other ways, and so that's you're really questioning dangerous. really if uh, democracy can survive unregulated I think social I think, media i think democracies are de are very challenged right now and have not proven they can move fast enough or big enough to deal with the challenges that we are facing yeah that's that's i'll go back to that carries the an advocate about around climate change i reckon that's what he meant by that little section there he says that people aren't accepting it fast enough you know they're not, they're not getting it drilled into their head fast enough that the world's going to burn because of climate change. <laughs> Absolutely mental. I would have thought they would have retired this man because he's very clumsy. Or is that his role to act like that? You know, while saying stuff like, you know, the only thing that's really holding us back is that First Amendment over there in America, you know? The freedom of religion is the only thing stopping them. Crazy, crazy stuff.